decarboxylation. What is the reason why alkanes do not lose a proton? Alkanes do not lose a proton because when we try to remove this hydrogen, the electrons that will be left behind will not be able to delocalize onto any of these atoms here. So therefore, removing a proton from the alkane molecule is not possible. It is exactly for the same reason why carboxylic acid do not lose carbon dioxide. Say for example, again, if you want to try to remove carbon dioxide, then there will be electrons that will be left behind. Obviously, they cannot get delocalized onto this carbon, which is not an electronegative atom. So this is also not going to be possible. But decarboxylation can happen in three oxocarboxylate ions. Now, what is this three oxocarboxylate ion? So here we have an example for a three oxocarboxylate ion. If you assign this is carbon number one, this is two, and this is three, and at the third position, you have an oxo group. This group right here is an oxo group. Why should this be called as an oxo group? We know that this is a keto group, but why should this be called as an oxo group? Okay, we have two functional groups here. Here we have the carboxylate and here we have the keto group. Between these two, obviously the carboxylate is going to have higher priority because of which this keto group should be used as a prefix. The prefix for keto group is oxo. So that is the reason we call this as 3-oxo-carboxylate ion. 3-oxo-carboxylate ions can undergo uh, decarboxylation because the electrons that will be left behind can easily get delocalized onto this oxygen. So if you want to remove carbon dioxide, obviously these electrons need to come in to form the double bond between carbon and oxygen. And this bond needs to break and it will form a double bond right there for which the pi electrons right here, the pi bond, the electrons from the pi bond is going to go on to oxygen. Now because it, it has got a way to delocalize those left behind electrons, it has the possibility to remove um, carbon dioxide. So here is the structure that will be obtained. basically an enolate ion, which will be resonance stabilized with the other resonance contributor. This reaction is exactly the same as removing a proton from the alpha carbon. So let's say that you have a base. The base is going to go abstract this hydrogen present on the alpha carbon, thrust these electrons on to, to form a double bond. The electrons from the pi bond is going to go on to oxygen because now these electrons have got a way to get delocalized the enolate ion can be formed decarboxylation can be even more easier under uh, acidic conditions because there could be intramolecular proton transfer uh, where this oxygen is trying to pull this hydrogen let's say that these electrons are going to come in to form a double bond so it can eliminate the carbon dioxide molecule this is going to come in whereas the pi electrons are going to go abstract this hydrogen so it, so it can form the hydroxy group there so here it has formed an enol which can undergo keto enol totemization to give the most stable keto form It is harder for beta dicarboxylic acids to undergo decarboxylation. Here is an example for beta dicarboxylic acid, which is malonic acid. So why it is called as beta dicarboxylic acid? Let's take a look into this. this. This is a carboxylic acid functional group, and this is another carboxylic acid functional group. Now these two carboxylic acids are in beta position with respect to each other. So this is an alpha carbon, this is a beta carbon. So with respect to this functional group, this carboxylic acid in the beta position, right? So that's why they are called as beta dicarboxylic acids. Beta dicarboxylic acids need to take higher temperatures in order to undergo decarboxylation. Why? Because let's say that you're going to remove the carbon dioxide molecule for which these electrons need to come in here. This is going to form the double bond and this pi electrons are going to go up except in hydrogen so there is intramolecular proton transfer happening but there is also one more effect that is happening here these electrons that is present on oxygen will also try to get delocalized onto the same oxygen take a look into this so here as these electrons come in and it will form a double bond here and this double bond will need to break and it will need to go out, go on to oxygen in the same way these electrons that is present on oxygen 
lone pair of electrons that is present on oxygen will also try to get delocalized onto the same oxygen and therefore there are two competing effects so because of which decarboxylation will be uh, slightly difficult in the case of malonic acid so here is the enol form which can undergo keto enol tautomerization to give the keto form on the whole, decarboxylation can happen in 3-oxo-carboxylic acids. Here are two more examples. 3-oxo-hexanoic acid, when it undergoes decarboxylation, it's going to give us a ketone. Similarly, 2-oxo-cyclohexane carboxylic acid, when it undergoes decarboxylation, it gives cyclohexanone molecule. So this is going to get eliminated. This is going to get eliminated.